Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Balls fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, in light of the big debacle yesterday with Jordan Seaton, we're going to be talking about our 2024 class. This is something that was brought up to me by somebody that comments on my channel a lot uh, and has been a loyal subscriber to the channel in the only 10 you see. So she brought this up and I thought that it was a great idea because I know that everyone's pissed off, right? I mean, you know, it's a guy that we felt like we could get, felt like, you know, obviously would have helped this roster out tremendously. And, you know, then he pulls one under the daggum rug or out of his hat, however you want to say it, and chooses Colorado. And um, I will also say this, okay, because I've been looking at social media. A lot of y'all have to be very careful with what you're saying on social media. Please keep in mind that our current players will see it, and so will the guys that we will want in the future. It's not going to be a good look, and we do not want to be that program. Trust me when I tell you that. Be very, very careful. Again, I understand that y'all are pissed off. All of us are, but you've got to control yourself a lot better on social media. All right, so let's talk about our 2024 class. We have 20 commits in the class. Two of them are five stars. Ten of them are four stars, and eight of them are three stars. We're ranked number 12 nationally and number seven in the SEC, and that includes Texas and Oklahoma. And I'm getting all of my information from 24-7 Sports. If you watch this channel, then you know that that's what I usually go by. So we are going to touch on all 20 of those players and just kind of talk about what they're going to be bringing to this roster. Let's start off with offensive line. All right, just so that y'all understand how this screen is written out, okay, I've got the players that are committed in this class, and then up under that, I've got their average star rankings, uh, you know, as a group. Then next to that, I've got how the roster is going to look or how it actually looks currently. Um, you know, I've got a grade next to that. And then for this screen only, up under it, just because, you know, I know this is one that everyone's you know upset about because of jordan seaton i want for y'all to take a look at the way that the offensive line roster depth is built out at this point so that's what you're seeing down at the bottom all right so we've got 16 total offensive linemen uh you know just as far as what i know you know as far as the guys that are still currently here and that could potentially and probably will be coming back next season so we've got two centers we've got five tackles or you know eight because there are some guys that could also play tackle and then we've got six guards or nine guards because you know we've got three more guys that could also play guard. All right, so first guy is Bennett Warren. He's from Texas. He's six foot eight, three hundred and thirty pounds. He plays tackle. He's a four star. He is number eighty seventh nationally, number eight at his position, and he is number thirteen in the state. All right, so Bennett is a guy that has a lot of size. Okay, he is a big guy. Okay, he moves pretty well. He does need to work on his footwork, but as a tackle, and I do think that he's a true tackle, he's going to be a guy that in a year or two should be able to play on this football team somewhere, whether it's left tackle, whether it's right tackle, that's going to depend on who is still left in that season and how everything pans out. But obviously, you know, he's a pretty strong guy. You know, he does need to work on some of his, you know, strength moves, um, you know, his technique, he needs to work on some of that. But once he gets on campus, I mean, Coach E is going to get him right. Obviously, you know, our strength staff is going to pretty much recreate his entire body. And, uh, you know, I think that he would do well to lose a little bit of fat, gain some speed, you know, gain some quickness, and then rebuild that weight with muscle and get stronger. And that's exactly what we are expecting out of him. Not sure if he's going to enroll early or not, but, you know, hopefully he is because we could use that depth on this offensive line. But obviously, you know, he's the highest rated offensive lineman in this class. And he is a really, really good football player. Next guy is Max Anderson. He's also from Texas, six foot five, 309 pounds. He's a tackle as well. Four star player. He's number 240 in the country, number 12 at his position and number 38 in the state. So Max's brother, Nate, plays for Oklahoma. He is in the transfer portal. Some people are speculating on whether or not he's going to be coming to join us in Knoxville. Now, I believe that he plays guard. He hasn't played much, but, you know, I wouldn't mind having him come in. I just think that, that would be great to have two brothers playing on the same team. But Max is a guy that has beautiful technique for the most part. And he's an absolute and total dog. You're going to hear that throughout pretty much the rest of this entire film, okay? 
Max is one of those guys that, you know, you definitely want to get into a bar fight with. And whenever we're talking about front seven guys, I want for y'all to just imagine how they would look inside of a bar. You know, are they the bouncers? Are they the guys that's beating up those bouncers? Are they the ones that come up and fight them? Are they hiding in the corner? All that good stuff. The offensive line in this class, they're all guys that are going to be getting down and dirty and tossing bodies in those bar fights. And Max Anderson is no different. Now, he is rated as a tackle, but I think that he has a lot more upside at guard. That's not to say that he can't play tackle because he most definitely can. But if you put him at guard, all of a sudden you're talking about just that. I mean, he could potentially be, you know, a first round type of a player at guard. Also, I think that he could, you know, potentially be a first round player at tackle. He's just, you know, a little bit on the shorter side, I, I guess I would say, but he is a really, really good football player. And, you know, you can see that right here from his film. Next guy is William Satterwhite, and he is from Ohio, six foot three, 300 pounds. He is an interior offensive lineman. He's four star number 19 at his position, number 13 in his state. Now, taking it back to that bar fight thing that I was just talking about, William Satterwhite is probably the scrappiest of this entire offensive line bunch. Whenever you're watching him block, it looks like he's getting into a fight. You can tell that he is really, really strong once he gets his hands on. He has great feet. I think his technique is probably the best out of all of these offensive linemen. He's probably going to be playing center for us, okay? As y'all can see, you know, we are short on depth at center, especially with Addison Nichols transferring out. William Satterwhite is a guy that can play anywhere on the offensive line, but I'm pegging him to be playing center. And I think that he will have a strong push or make a strong push to get some playing time early. And, you know, I definitely think that he will be a very key depth piece. I'm very excited to see what he does on campus. Next guy is Jesse Perry. He's from Tennessee. He is a tackle, 6'5", 280 pounds. He's a three-star. He's number 51 at his position, number 19 in the state. All right, now, Jesse Perry is probably rated a little bit lower than some of these other guys because of the league that he plays in. You can watch this film. You can tell he's not really playing up against the best competition. But what I do like is if you just watch him on an individual basis, you see how quickly he can move and you can still tell that he does have the proper skill set to play SEC football. He's got good size. I think he's a versatile guy. And again, he's an absolute and total dog. He's nasty. I mean, really, really nasty. You know, a lot of these guys have that bully mindset. And that's what you want from all of your front seven players, but especially on that offensive line. They should more or less be the bouncers of this football team that is tossing bodies around everywhere. And Jesse Perry definitely fits that mold. I love what I saw from his senior film. And I think that he's a guy that could potentially get some playing time in maybe his second to third year, maybe a little bit more of a project. I think that he will kind of have to get used to SEC caliber speed and strength and size, things like that, just because he didn't see a whole lot of that in high school. But who knows? We will definitely see once he gets on campus. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Last guy on the offensive line is Gage Ginther. Okay, he's from Colorado. He's also an interior offensive lineman. He's six foot six, 290 pounds. He's a three star, number 62 at his position, and he's number one in Colorado. All right, so Gage could potentially be the best offensive lineman in this entire class in all honesty. All right, so he is playing in Colorado, which is why he's not rated as high. Okay, so keep this in mind as we're going through all this, guys. All right, these analysts and stuff on these, you know, websites or, you know, all that type of stuff, they're not really football guys. Okay, a lot of them aren't even sportsmen. Like they've never even played a sport. And then there's a ton of politics that goes into this stuff, especially the further down you get in those rankings. There's really no realistic way that you could tell what is the difference between a guy that we have at, we'll, we'll call it number 249 and a guy that's at 250, okay? It's just really hard to be able to pick and choose, and that's where the politics come in at. But Gage Ginther is a dog. He's super nasty, okay? He is a big-time bully, and you have to love that. He has great size, okay? I think that he could play anywhere on the offensive line, but I'm going to say guard or tackle wherever we have the most pressing need at, he can definitely fill it. And he's a guy that I think could get some playing time, you know, maybe in his first season, all depending on how he can translate his game to the SEC. But I would say definitely by his second season, we should expect to see him getting some rotation or being a starter on this offensive line. All right, now let's go to the defensive ends. All right, so we have three commits in this class and they are averaging 3.6 stars and i gave the current roster a b okay um now the first guy is jordan ross okay he is from alabama he's a six foot five 233 pounder uh five star okay he's number 10 in the country number one at his position 
and number two in the state. All right, so first thing that jumps off of the film to me with Jordan Ross is his speed, his burst off of the football, his size, his length. He's a guy that reminds me a lot of James Pierce, but like a faster version of him, if that makes sense, all right? He is going to be an absolute and total stud. We've got to make sure that we continue to show him all the love, all right? So if y'all are frequent on social media, reach out to everybody in this class and show them love. But I really think that specifically he's one of those guys because he could potentially end up flipping somewhere. I, you know, I feel like he might be solid, but everything that I'm hearing is that's one that we don't really know until he signs on that dotted line. But I mean, you know, he's got great length, okay, great speed, uh, and you know, he uses his arms and his uh, length very, very well. You know, he's a strong tackler at the point of contact. And, you know, I just think that he's going to be a tremendous playmaker for this team. Next guy is Kellen Lindstrom. Okay, he's from Missouri, six foot five, 235 pounds. He's a three star, number 49 at his position, and number nine in the state. So Kellen puts me in the mind of a, a ball great in Will Overstreet. He's got a very similar game. Okay, he's got that, you know, burst off of the edge, uses his arms and his length well, okay? He can bull rush you, all right? He can also spin move you, but he's also gonna cause a lot of turnovers. He's a very headsy player, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do in the rotation over the next couple of years. I think that he's a guy that, you know, may take two to maybe three years to see the field just because we've got some phenomenal players at the end position, but I just would not be surprised, especially with the way that Rodney Garner likes to rotate players if he doesn't get to see the field earlier than that. All right, he's a good, solid football player. And, you know, he's really good also in the run game, which is something that I feel like this roster might kind of be missing, especially if a guy like Tyler Barron leaves. But, you know, he's kind of similar also to Tyler Barron's game. OK, so again, he can be more of a run stopping in, but he also has, uh, you know, has the skill set to be able to rush the pass. Last guy for the ends is Carson Gentle. Okay, he's from Tennessee. He's six foot three, 241 pounds. He's a three star, number 116 in his position and number 40 in the state. So Carson plays in space a lot for his team in high school, but he's definitely a guy that can rush the passer. Also see that, you know, he's playing a little bit of tight end. I would not be too surprised if we try him out there because tight end is gonna be a position that we're gonna get to later on in this, in this video, but we are very, very short on depth there. And if we've got some guys that can play tight end, I think we need to try to work them in there. But he is a really good football player. I loved his senior film. Again, he's a guy that, you know, playing end, I think that it would take him two to three years to probably see a significant amount of rotation, uh, you know, on this front. But he is going to be a very solid football player once he gets the opportunity. All right, let's talk about our quarterback situation. So we've got Jake Merklinger. He's from Georgia, six foot three, 195 pounds. He's a four star. Number 188 in the country, number 12 in his position, and number 24 in the state. Jake has got a, a lot of game, okay? He is a prototype pocket passer, but he can also run, okay? He's a great athlete. He throws a beautiful deep ball, very, very accurate. He kind of puts me in the mind, and I kind of hate to say this, but of Carson Beck, okay? He's got that same skill set, but I think that he's going to be a little bit more of a gunslinger than Carson Beck is. Carson Beck is kind of like, I'm not going to throw it unless somebody's pretty much wide open, okay? I think that he's going to be a baller, especially in this offense. That's the way that we like him, but he's going to take good care of that football as well because, again, he's very, very accurate. I'm really looking forward to seeing him on campus. Curious to see, is he going to end up being our backup quarterback? Heard that Gaston Moore is going to be transferring out. I have not seen him hit that transfer portal yet, so hopefully he does come back because obviously playing quarterback, you know, going from high school to the ACC or college period, it's a very difficult task to start as a true freshman. And I would hate, you know, absolutely hate to put that much pressure on this young man because, I mean, you know, if Nico for, you know, God forbid, for any reason does go down, you'd hate for him to have to come in just learning this offense but i think that he is going to be enrolling early so that's great news he's going to have a lot of opportunity to be able to learn the playbook and you know to kind of learn the way that coach heupel and coach halsley want for him to operate everything but i think he's going to be a very very good player don't see him starting over nico but once nico goes i think that he probably will be the guy all right let's talk about our running back commit in peyton lewis okay he is from virginia six foot one 197 pounds four star 190th in the country number 14 at his position and number five in the state so peyton lewis reminds me a lot of arian foster okay he's you know that six one probably going to be about 230 pounds hopefully you know somewhere in that 
ballpark by the time he actually starts to play, but just so smooth, so fluid, great balance, great burst. And then, you know, he's also deceptively strong. He runs through tackles, keeps his legs turning. And, you know, obviously on these highlights, we're not going to see him fumbling, but I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Uh, he is a guy that I definitely feel like if needed, he could come in and get some playing time next season. All right. Now we've got a few running backs already on this roster. No idea if, you know, Small is going to be coming back. I feel like Jalen Wright's probably gone. You know, hopefully we can retain Dylan Sampson, but we've got a few more bodies ahead of Peyton. It's going to be very interesting to see how that battle kind of plays out, uh, you know, from this time this season to, uh, you know, the start of next season or, you know, really about spring and summer camp, we should kind of start to see what the depth looks like. But he's a really, really good football player. He's got great speed. Okay, he's a track guy. He's one of the fastest players in this country. And, you know, again, he runs so fluid and so smooth, he may not look as fast as he actually is. But I think that he's a huge pickup for this offense and for this team. All right, let's go back to defense and talk about the linebackers. The first one is Edwin Spillman. He's from Tennessee, six foot two, 214 pounds. He's a four star, number 26 at, at his position and number six in the state. So Edwin is the brother of Nate, who is currently on this roster at wide receiver. And Edwin is an absolute and total dog. He's a stud, kind of that Mike linebacker guy, but he could also play a little bit of outside, I believe in our system. He's gonna do a pretty good job of covering, uh, you know, in pass coverage, okay, especially in zone. Man-to-man -man might not be the best deal for him, something that he would have to work on. But if you just talk about him stopping the run, he does a beautiful job of that, okay? Sideline to sideline, beautiful burst, okay? And he arrives with some bad intentions. He's a thumper. He actually reminds me a ton of that 2023 class, all the linebackers that we had there. So I'm really, really looking forward to adding him to what I believe is gonna be a much improved group next season. Next guy is Jordan Burns. He's from Georgia, six foot two, 220 pounds. He's rated as a three star, number 41 at his position, and number 52 in the state. Now, Jordan is listed bigger than Edwin, but I actually think that Jordan is more of the outside linebacker type, okay? He shows a little bit more range. I think he's going to be really, really good in pass coverage. And uh, I mean, you know, again, he's just a thumper, okay? He's a football player. Both of these guys are. And I actually think that both of them could get some rotation next season, all right? Just because we've seen that we will rotate our younger linebackers. And again, we've got some good guys that, you know, are in the class above them in 2023, I really love that linebacker room, man. I think that it could potentially be the best on this entire football team next season. Will Elijah Herring continue to play there? I think that adding these two guys means that, you know, maybe we can kind of get him out of that room. We don't really have to worry about it anymore. And I hate to keep on kind of harping on that because I don't want to, you know, bash that young man because I know that he's trying his best, but he's just not, you know, the coach staff's not doing him any favors playing him in space. Okay, he needs to move to like end or something like that uh, so that he can get the most bang for his buck at this school. So love these two guys. And, you know, I think that they're both a little bit underrated. You know, again, get back, getting back to those politics, um, you know, I feel like they will be able to contribute, if nothing else, at least on special teams next season. All right, let's talk about our defensive tackle commit in Jeremiah's Hurd. Okay, he's from Georgia, six foot seven, 290 pounds. He's a three star, number 88, his position, and number 68 in the state. All right, so Jeremiah's is a guy that could end up playing on the offensive line. All right, so I only put him right here at tackle because he's listed as a defensive lineman on 24 7 sports. And that is a position that we have a lot of need in. Uh, just because there's not a whole lot of young depth. Most of the players that we have right now are going to be leaving us next season. And really, even some of the guys, I'm not even 100% sure if they are going to be coming back next season. So that is a position that I feel like this coaching staff has kind of dropped the ball on. We've got to do a way better job, I think, in the 2025 class of getting tight ends and defensive tackles. I feel like that's got to be number one on our big board. We've got to go after that really hard. We might need two to three of those in the next class. Now we are targeting some defensive tackles in uh, not in the transfer portal, but there are some JUCO guys. And, you know, I haven't, well, I don't know if we are targeting any in the transfer portal. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard that we've offered any guys, but hopefully we do that because there are some really good ones out there. And, you know, there's some guys that are younger. So I think that that's probably what we'll try to do. Now, as far as Jeremiah's, 
All I've been able to find on him are basketball highlights, no real football stuff. So not quite sure how he looks on the football field, but looking at him as an athlete, number one thing that kind of stands out to you is clearly he's a huge young man and he moves pretty well, right? So again, I think that the offensive line would probably suit him best just based off of what I'm seeing on the basketball court. But who's to say if he doesn't have the proper burst uh, you know, and strength to be able to plug up some gaps as a defensive tackle as well. All right, so speaking of tight ends, let's talk about Jonathan Eccles. All right, he is from Florida, okay? He plays at IMG Academy, six foot four, 230 pounds. I think that he may actually be heavier than that right now. He's a four-star, number 18 in his position and number 32 in the state. All right, so first thing that probably jumps out to y'all is that I gave our current roster a D plus, and that's really just because we don't have anybody. It is just Ethan Davis. Um, and you know, that's pretty much it. So we are targeting some guys in the transfer portal and that's a need. Okay. That's not a want, that's an absolute and total need. We are going to get somebody in that transfer portal. We got to hit on the guys that we actually want. So, you know, I think that we will do that this weekend. You know, we've got a couple of guys visiting. So looking forward to that. All right. So Jonathan Eccles is a guy that interestingly enough was rated as a higher defensive end prospect. And if you've seen his clips, his film from playing defensive end, uh, he might be, you know, if he came in and played that on this team, he might be one of the best on this roster from day one. I mean, he's a freak playing in. But if you're talking about him at tight end, his game has gotten so much better, okay? IMG has done a beautiful job with him. And I do feel like he could get some playing time as a true freshman. Now, again, that's all going to depend on who we can get in the transfer portal, all right? And the health of Ethan Davis. And we talk about that a lot, but that's something that has got to continue to be noted because again, he's very injury prone, but I think that Jonathan Eccles could step up. Okay, we're gonna have to dumb some things down, I think, so that he can at least understand this offense. And if we do that, he definitely has the proper skill set to be a good enough football player, uh, you know, to add something to this team as a true freshman. If not, if it's gonna be more of the Ethan Davis deal where, you know, he doesn't get to see much playing time, then for sure in his second year, I think that he could be not just a guy, but you know, one of the guys in this offense and him and Ethan Davis, that's gonna be a dynamic duo for Nico in 2025. So really looking forward to that. Uh, you know, I think he's a tremendous add and get for this football program. All right, let's talk about the wide receivers. First one is Mike Matthews. He's from Georgia, six foot one, 180 pounds. He's a five star, number 24 in the country, number seven at his position, number four in the state. Now, Mike Matthews is a guy that I've been watching play for, you know, two, three years, something like that, okay? He's a dog, all right? He's not just a wide receiver. He's a football player and he's a dog. He's been making tough catches in playoff situations, you know, uh, in just tough situations, period, since I've been watching, all right? Now his offense this season doesn't throw the ball that much. And I think that that's a part of the reason he kind of took a bump down in the rankings. Again, there's a lot of politics involved in that, but make no mistake about it. He is one of the best wide receivers in this entire class. He can do it all. He can play slot, he can play outside. He's a smart kid, he's a tough kid. He can block, okay, he's gonna high point footballs. He's deceptively fast. He's definitely a 4-4 guy, but again, he's such a smooth, fluid athlete that he may not look as fast as he actually is. Runs beautiful, crisp routes. And, you know, again, he's going to catch with his hands. And uh, he's exactly what this offense needs moving forward. He's exactly what Nico needs. I think that he could play as a true freshman. Now, we do have some good players already at the wide receiver position, especially in that 2023 class. Well, really, I'm talking more specifically about one, and that's Nathan Leacock. He's a guy that didn't play at all last season, but I'm definitely expecting this upcoming season for him to be one of our guys. Not sure if Brew's gonna be coming back. Not sure if we're gonna be able to get anyone in the transfer portal. Obviously, we've still got Squirrel White, still got Chaz Nimrod, still got Caleb Webb up to this point. So it'll be interesting to see how that room, you know, kind of shakes up throughout the transfer portal period. But I definitely think that Mike Matthews is a guy that should be pushing to get some playing time as a true freshman. If not, as in his second year, he should definitely be one of our go-to guys without a question. Next guy is Braylon Staley. He's from South Carolina. He's six feet, 180 pounds. He's a four star, number 132 in the country, number 24 at his position, and number two in the state. 
Braylon Staley is a lot like Mike Matthews, okay? I mean, they're very, very similar. Only thing that I will say about Braylon is that he seems like he might be a little bit more uh, twitchy, okay? He's got a little bit more twitch to his game, and he is definitely underrated. He's a dog. Absolutely love his game. Again, he's a guy that I feel like could be pushing for some playing time as a freshman. It's going to be very interesting to see what this coaching staff does moving forward because we saw what happened once Brew went down. We didn't really have any dynamic players on the outside outside of squirrel white okay we've got to find some of these young guys or we've got to see if some of these young guys can be those difference makers in this offense and you know hey i wouldn't be mad if some of the older guys step up too i don't care who it is somebody's got to do it but for those reasons i feel like both of these two true freshmen coming in next season will get a much stronger look than the true freshman got last season i'm really looking forward to this offseason all right, let's talk about the secondary, starting off with cornerback Caleb Beasley. He's from Tennessee, six feet tall, 185 pounds. He's a four-star, ranked number 179th in the country, number 16 at his position, and number five in the state. All right, so y'all can see that I've got the current roster at cornerback rated as a C plus, and that's just because we lost a few pieces. I don't feel like we've got as much depth as we should. That's another place that we have not developed talent. I don't feel like good enough you know i don't feel like we got some of these younger guys like jordan matthews christian conyer we have not got them enough playing time in blowout situations and i'm not quite sure why okay i'm not on the coaching staff i'm not trying to necessarily undermine what they're doing but it does seem like sometimes you got to kind of throw guys out into the fire and see how they respond we haven't done that so i feel like we are a little bit short on depth and for those reasons i feel like caleb beasley as a guy that already looks physically college ready could most definitely come in and you know get some playing time as a true freshman he's got great coverage in man or in zone you can tell he's a smart player i believe that his dad is a coach and he definitely plays like it he's a very solid tackler almost like a gabe judy lolly like almost like a maybe thicker version of gabe judy lolly that has way better man coverage skills that's kind of what you're going to be getting with him and i think that you could get that type of production from him as a true freshman if we would just let him play all right now he can also play star because like i said he can pretty much do it all, right? Okay, he's gonna be good in the box, okay? He can come up and tackle, get off blocks well, gonna play with excellent leverage. And he could also, you know, quite as this is kept, he could also play either of the safety positions. We'll talk about that here in just a minute, but it'll be interesting to see how that room, you know, kind of shapes up in the off season. And I'm gonna be very, very interested to see where Caleb Beasley, who also is the cousin of Aaron Beasley, that's on our roster right now, for those of y'all who don't know. Uh, it will be very interesting to see where Caleb Beasley is going to end up playing at. But I do think that for depth purposes, probably want to see him playing cornerback. All right, and the last position group that we're going to talk about is safety, all right? So what we've got here is Boo Carter, okay? He's from Tennessee, 5'10", 184 pounds, four-star, number 146 in the country, number nine at his position, and number four in the state. Now, first and foremost, Boo Carter ain't going nowhere, okay? He's all ball, so for everyone who's kind of throwing that out there or scared about it, just stop it. Just don't even worry about it. He is coming to Knoxville in 2024. Now, he's very interesting because he's such a great athlete, especially on offense. I find it very hard to believe that he's going to be kept off of the offensive side of the football. And I've said that from day one and watching his film. He's just too much of a difference maker there. I think that you kind of be, you know, selling him short if you do not let him play offense to some degree. Definitely a guy that, you know, we can see on special teams. Um, and, you know, if he does play defense right now, 24-7 Sports has him slotted as a safety. I think that he will be more of a star player because he's got more of that nickel to his game. Now, you know, in coverage from what I've seen so far, it's not 100% great. And that's not because he's not a great athlete. It's just because I think he just needs more time and more coaching at that position. Once he gets it, he's definitely going to be, I mean, or he definitely could be phenomenal in coverage. Now, I will say this. I've seen him in some one-on-ones at some camps, and he was shutting people down, okay? He looked really good there. So that does give you a whole lot of hope for him, uh, you know, playing in the secondary. Now, as far as playing safety, you know, he could do it, but I do think that we may have some guys that are, are a little bit longer than he is that you might would rather put at safety instead of him. I'm not going to, you know, ever discount or discredit what Boo Carter can do because, again, he can do it all. Not quite sure where he ends up in the secondary specifically, but if he does end up at safety for depth purposes, you know, I think that he could see some playing time maybe in the next two to three years. It'll just be very, very interesting to see 
how he plays once he gets on campus uh, and to see how his game translates. So, you know, that one to me is kind of a mystery because it could go a million different ways. But obviously having him on your roster is a huge, huge deal. You know, he's got a great personality and he's an absolute and total dog. He can do it all. You know, I've said that three to four times, but it's very, very true. And, uh, you know, he just adds a lot of quality to this roster. Next guy is Boo Carter's current teammate and Marcus Gorey Jr. Okay, so obviously he's also from Tennessee, six foot one, 177 pounds. He's a three star number 35 at his position and number 12 in the state so marcus for me is much more of a true safety okay definitely one of those you know probably box safety is what i would say very very physical okay he looks good in pass coverage he's got good length okay listed at about 6'1 177 he might be a little bit heavier than that obviously he would have to gain some weight before he could play safety in the sec for us so just for that reason i would say it might take him a year or two but he could also play star okay he could also play corner again got a whole lot of versatile guys in this class in 2023 class and that's just what this staff likes everywhere so very very versatile player and i absolutely love his film love his game and i'm looking forward to seeing what he does on campus last guy is edrick farouk and he's from maryland he's five foot 11 180 pounds he's a three-star player number 70 at his position and number 20 in the state okay so i actually got to see him play in person he's got good size for a safety okay you know he's got a good thick frame looks like he's about college size ready okay he might need to gain a few more pounds maybe get just a little bit stronger but he looks a lot like a you know prototype strong safety he's good in coverage he's a very smart player uh you know he's not going to have any off the field issues that's something that i really liked about him uh, in the game that i'm talking about it was buford versus saint francis and uh you know saint francis wanted to fight buford at the end of that game but, uh, you know, he was nowhere to be found in any of that scuffle. He just got himself away from it. So you have to love that. Definitely a guy that you want inside of this locker room. I think that he could potentially end up being a leader. And, uh, you know, I think that in a year or two, he could be a guy that could get some good playing time for this team, you know, kind of at least get into the mix. Again, with the secondary guys, a lot of them coming in as true freshmen will be some key, uh, you know, special teams guys. And I feel like this is one of those for sure. I think that he could play a lot as a special teams guy, as a true freshman. All right, so I know that that video was a little bit longer, but I wanted to make sure that I touched on everyone in this class. And this kind of gave y'all some hope moving forward, okay? We do have a lot of very good football players, okay? And y'all can see that, right? So hopefully y'all feel a lot better. It's just gonna be about this coaching staff being able to develop that talent, which again, I don't wanna necessarily undermine them, especially not everywhere, because I feel like some coaches are better at that than others but we've got to do a much better job of getting people into the football games and giving them an opportunity to, you know, get ready to actually start, okay? Because we never know who's going to go down. And I know I keep on saying this, but it's so true. We cannot continue to live in this transfer portal. And if we do miss on a guy or two, you know, it can't be devastating to this roster. And us missing out on Jordan seating was not devastating to this roster by any means. So for all of y'all that are just being very negative about it, I most definitely get it, but brighten up, man, cheer up. We've got some great offensive linemen. We've got some great players everywhere. And I feel like this team is gonna be just fine. Really looking forward to seeing how we finish, uh, you know, in the transfer portal. That's gonna be a big piece to how this football team looks moving forward, especially next season, obviously. But hopefully we can go out and target at some of the positions where, you know, you were able to see we didn't have as much depth. Hopefully we can go out and target some younger guys in the transfer portal uh you know for those positions and uh you know i think that if we do that we're gonna be fine so hope that y'all enjoyed this video please make sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell make sure to share it with your friends family and other volunteer fans we'll see y'all on the next one thanks peace